Good afternoon. At it once again. Unconditional love 11. Love as a potent weapon. It's a, it would seem um, odd to call love a weapon. And it's, it's probably not the right weapon. But it's, it's a, a weapon for good, if you like. But rather than explain it, I'll, I'll put it forward as a, as a number of stories, which actually did happen. Uh, it's just people, and certainly myself, ha ha had, ha have no idea or have, uh, had no idea just how powerful uh, love or loving thoughts are uh, when one thinks uh, really uh, positive and loving thoughts about somebody, somebody you like or somebody that you don't like. Uh, this is when you use it as a, as what can be used as a weapon. You actually ambush that person with love. And it first came about with me probably 18 years ago. I was at a dance. I like my ballroom dancing. And a guy called Kevin came up and he said, John, now why he came up to me, I don't know, but we, we've just been friends. And, and he said, John, look, he said, I've, I've got a problem. What is it, Kevin? He said, my mailman, when he puts the mail, puts the letters in my mailbox, he folds them over. Folds them over. I said, well, get a bigger letterbox. He said, no, the letterbox is big enough, but he folds them over and when he puts them in. And for some documents and photographs, he, he, he crinkles them and it, and it ruins them. I said, why don't you talk to him? He said, I can't. He said, I, I work as a guard on the railway from midnight until 8 o'clock in the morning. So I'm fast asleep when he comes around about 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock in the morning. And he said, I, I don't know what to do. So on the spur of the moment, I said, look, Kevin, I, I don't know, but all I can suggest to you is just instead of being irritated, I mean, you are irritated by this fact, and fair enough, but just have really loving, positive thoughts about the guy. Like, I uh, hope he uh, gets on well with his wife. Hope he gets on well with the kids. Hope he gets, he's got a lovely pet dog. Hope he's, uh, his finances are in order. He's making good money. He's got a lovely home. It doesn't matter what you think, what you, what you, what you think, what your thoughts are, as long as they're loving and they're positive. Just, just literally shower him with that at once a day, or you know, whenever you you think about it, or when you start to get irritated by what he does. Replace that and just put these loving thoughts. A week later, on a Friday night, John! Uh, along he came. And um, he said, You wouldn't believe it, but the letters are going in straight. I did that. I just had loving thoughts about him. But, but the, for whatever reason, the, the letters are not creased over, they're going in straight. Fantastic. So that's okay. So then a, a friend of mine, she's a Pakistani lass and uh, was born there, and um, she said, oh, she said, when I go back in a month's time, she said, I go back to Pakistan to, to see to see my family. She said, I'm going to give that sister-in-law of mine, she said, a real tongue lashing. She said, I'm going to get stuck into her. I said, what's the problem? She said, every time I go there, when I have a bit of, uh, I can have a, a chat, with my brother, just the two of us, she, she purposely comes in and says, go down and do some shopping or do this or do that or something. But she breaks it up and she said, oh, I, I know, in the few weeks that I'm here, I never have a chance to talk to my brother. A at a personal level, privately, uh, she always comes in and she says, I'm sick of it. I'm going to really get stuck into her. I'm going to give her such a tongue lashing. And I said, look, Brenda, all I know is, <laughs> more than a lot of people, anger creates anger and violence begets violence. So I said, uh, the same as I suggested to Kevin before that, why don't you just inundate her uh, with loving, positive thoughts about her. I hope she's getting on well, I hope her sex life is great. It doesn't really matter what it is, I hope she's getting on with her husband, they're not arguing, I hope everything's uh, wonderful with her family and the in-laws, it doesn't matter. As long as you just have really loving, positive thoughts about her. She said, John, I'll do that tonight. I said, okay. Next morning, 
9 o'clock. Ding, 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 ding. Telephone. It's my friend. She said, John, I've never had a phone call from my sister-in-law in my life. And she rings me up 8.30 this morning. I did, I did that last night. I had these positive thoughts about her. I had these loving thoughts about her. And it's 8.30 this morning, she rings me up and says, when you come back to, to, uh, when you come back to Pakistan, I'm going to give you the best, you're going to have the best two weeks holiday you've ever had. I'm going to make sure that you have a really wonderful, wonderful time. She said, John, I can't get over it. She said, I I've never had a phone call, let alone my, my, my sister-in-law being so nice to me. So this is the power. Now, maybe not using love as a weapon, but what's going on now? I don't know, but this is how I imagine it. Everything is in balance. Uh, we, we, every relationship we have, whether it's with our dog or our mother-in-law or husband, wife, kids, we've got boss, we've got these relationships. The people we like, the people we don't like, they're like this. I don't like you, you don't like me, but it, it's in balance. Uh, so what happens, so there's two people, one doesn't like the other or irritated by each other. And suddenly the other person now pauses, has an outpouring of, 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 of love or, or, or loving thoughts, positive thoughts about that person. What you're doing is you're putting that, that whole balance, that, that relationship out of balance, out of whack. And the other person here to bring it back into balance, he can't, he can't be angry with you because that's, that's even creating it more imbalance. He has to do something, be pleasant to you or say something to you or maybe somehow change his opinion about you. He's got to do something positive or loving to bring it back into balance. It's a little bit like you see somebody you know, at the office, you say, good morning, and they say good morning, and then the uh, lady say, good morning. Gee, it's a wonderful weather. And the other person says, good morning, but that's all. You know, hang on, you feel a couple because you scratched that person twice and I only scratched you once. But if the other person says, uh, and you say, good morning, it's a wonderful day, and the person says, yeah, good morning. Yeah, it's really beautiful, the weather outside. So you've got two comments. So it's in balance. So if, so if, if uh, well, this is something we, 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 we unconsciously do, even our normal conversation. So, uh, it's an interesting aspect of love and, and how we can actually apply it, but apply it in such a way that uh, uh, can, get, can get a positive reaction from some negative situation in our life. I suggest you, you try it. Someone that we all have people that press the wrong buttons, and we all have people that aggravate us or irritate us at times. Nothing wrong with that. And we're not all on the same wavelength, that's for sure. But try it. See what happens. I wish you success. And uh, it's certainly been uh, successful when I've used it, and at times that I've mentioned it to other people, it's been very successful to them. Bye for now. Talk to you again another time.